Woodworker Safety Week is upon us already, and I thought it'd be a great time to review some of the basic feather boards and push sticks that I use the most in my shop. Now, I've got a lot of different gadgets and I've tried a lot of different things over the years, uh, but these are the things that I find the most useful. Some of them I don't really use that often, but I'm going to show those to you as well, so at least you can see what's out there, and then you can decide what's right for you in your shop. Now, let's talk about feather boards first. Really, a feather board doesn't have to be anything more complicated than just a simple device that pushes the workpiece up against a fence. And the most basic version or example that I could find is something as simple as this shop-made version here. Okay, it's just a, a basic piece of oak with a bunch of slits cut in it. It's kept on an angle. And now these little pieces here are flexible. So as you push it and clamp it in place, push it against your workpiece, it holds everything in place and also stops it from kicking back. Um, this has a natural resistance to pushing in the opposite direction, so it's really one way only. But, this being the most basic, there are a ton of little gadgets on the market today, and the big thing these days is magnets. Okay, so you have, for instance, the MagSwitch brand has a bunch of great little, basically they have an on-off feature. One clockwise turn, the magnet's engaged. Turn them back to the left, and it's completely loose. And it's just a simple plastic feather board, nothing really fancy there. Uh, another one that's been around for a while is the Grip Tight Magnetic Feather Board. These guys operate with a simple plastic arm here on the side that's a little bit flexible, okay, and it's the same concept with a very strong magnet that holds it to the cast iron, and you just flip this little arm in the back, and that allows you to pop it off and move it to a different location. Now, the ones that I use the most tend to be the magnetic ones. I just love the fact that I can pretty much plop them anywhere down on the table and move them around as needed. Um, the mag switch in particular are one of my favorites because it's just so easy to turn the magnet on and off and move it all around. Now, one disadvantage you're going to find with a magnetic system is if you have a workpiece that's just the right length that the magnet is right over your miter slot, you're going to have some trouble gripping there. So, uh, that's definitely something to keep in mind and you may want to consider one of the other options or something that you can clamp to the table for some extra support. But let me show you how these work. It's pretty straightforward. Most of the time these days, I use their universal unit, okay, because this way I could run it in multiple directions. Okay, it's a little bit more versatile. Now let's do a quick review of proper feather board setup. If you're doing a through cut where uh, you push this piece all the way through and you end up with two separate pieces, you absolutely cannot have your feather board in line with the blade. Because if you do, the pressure from the feather board is going to push your off cut piece into the blade and that's going to kick back. So that's no good. So if you are doing a through cut, bring your feather board back a few inches before the blade. Give yourself a good safe zone there. And typically I just give a little bit of pressure into my workpiece with the workpiece in place, tighten it down, and you want just enough resistance so it, it's difficult to pull back toward you, um, but with a little moderate pressure you could push forward. You don't want a whole lot of resistance when you're pushing forward. Um, but that's really it. It's a very easy thing to set up and it really increases the uh, overall safety and the quality of the cut. Now see, the way this piece is sitting, if the feather board had been up here, it definitely would have pushed this further into the blade, causing a kickback, and that would have been extremely dangerous. Now there's one thing that I wanted to show you. It's not exactly a feather board. It's a little bit different, but something very, very useful to have in the shop. It's called a board buddy. At least that's the, the uh, brand name. I believe there might be a couple of uh, imitation versions of it on the market, but it always looks like this. It's a colored roller on a, uh, a unit here, a spring-loaded unit, that would attach to your fence. Now I have a new fence system here and I haven't had a chance to put the, uh, the little rail that goes in place and holds it in there so I can't show it to you in action but the idea is you usually have two of them here and this is great for sheet goods. As you're running the piece through this wheel will spin but it also puts downward and inward pressure onto your workpiece so it kind of does the same action as a feather board and certain models will only roll in one direction so that sort of helps as a uh, anti-kickback roller as well. So these are very handy to have around. Um, definitely a good thing to have on the saw, but it is a little bit more in terms of setup. Now contrary to what a lot of woodworkers believe, these are not push sticks. These are fingers. You really don't want your fingers anywhere near a blade if you can help it. So especially when you're within what I call sort of the danger zone. And a zero clearance insert is actually a great item for giving you an idea of what a danger zone is at the table saw. 
I also have an overarm blade guard that does the same thing. It gives me an effective zone that I know I should not have my hands anywhere near. So if you're not sure, it's nice to have those as gentle reminders. If you are in a case where you're getting too close to the blade, it's great to have some sort of push stick. Okay, some of these are more basic designs that have come with the tools that I've purchased. Okay, these two here, one is a, uh, a plastic, it's a little bit thicker. The other is an aluminum uh, shaft here, and it's a little bit thinner, so it's nice because you can get right in there, but a lot of people don't like the fact that this is made out of metal because if that hits the blade, you've got shards of metal uh, flying into the air. At least if this guy hits the blade, it's plastic, it's less likely to shatter. It's probably just going to cut the plastic. Either way, you don't want to touch the blade anyway, so, you know, whichever one you're more comfortable using. My favorite push stick by far is this very simple design. The idea here is that it's got a little hook at the back, which catches onto the workpiece, a little rubber foot in the front that helps you get a little grip, and I've got full control. The other thing is, just by the nature of the way this is being gripped, it applies a lot of forward pressure to the workpiece. So as I'm pushing forward, I'm not only hooked on the back and giving it that forward motion, it's just by nature putting downward pressure on the workpiece as well. Now one variation of a push stick, it's a little bit more pricey, but it does a lot more. It's called a gripper, kind of like a GRR, like grrr, growling gripper. The idea here is for small parts, even larger parts like this, it works really well. It's got a little foot on the outside that helps you balance it out. And this little piece in the middle can actually move back and forth to adjust for really small pieces. So a lot of times people ask me, how do you cut those really thin strips? Let's say you're, you're making some ebony pegs or something like that, and you need to cut a little tiny strip of wood here. Well, first of all, you can cut it from the outside of the piece. That's certainly one safer option. But if you want to make, you know, little quarter inch cuts, if you have something like this gripper, where this tiny little arm here in the back, if that safely fits between the blade and the fence, you're actually okay to go ahead and set this up like this. Make sure your foot is there to balance it out and push that piece through and make that cut safely because now my hands are removed and I've got complete control. These little rubber grippy pads down here will help you force it into the fence and, and get it safely through that cut. Uh, a quarter inch, you're, you're really pushing your luck. You want to be very careful with that. I probably would cut on the outside for that particular type of a cut, but you can get pretty darn close. You'll just have to decide what, you know, how safe is safe enough for your shop. So let's go ahead and make a couple test cuts. I'll show you how, uh, how simple this unit is, and then I'll show you how the gripper works. Now I'm gonna make a roughly one inch cut, cut a one inch strip from this piece here. So I'm gonna take my gripper and make sure that my spacing is such that the blade goes right in between this middle pad and the outer pad. And as long as it travels safely in the middle, I know I can make this cut with no problem. Tighten it down. Okay, get the workpiece in place, make sure it's all the way against the fence. And in fact, I usually put it down on the workpiece and then push both this and the workpiece into the fence. So by the time I hit, I know everything is as far over as it needs to be. Okay, let's make that cut. And there you go. A nice thin strip and, and a pretty safe cut at that. Now whether you make your own or you're buying uh, the commercially made stuff, hopefully you'll see now that feather boards and uh, push sticks really should be part of your everyday workflow. They make things a lot safer and it's going to increase the quality of your work. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.